My name is Pamela Wallen, and I've done so many things. A social worker, I worked in a penitentiary, I've been a broadcaster, a diplomat, and now I'm a corporate director, sit on the boards of companies. I work for the America Society to really focus on Canada-U.S. relations. My idea of perfect happiness is really spending time with friends. It's such a rare thing in my life. We're so busy. And when I think of a perfect evening, I think of the people that I love around me, good conversation, maybe a bottle of wine or two, but just some real time to connect. And uh, it's so rare and I so cherish it. I think my greatest fear is not being able to be there for my family in a time of need. My parents are aging and they live very far away in Saskatchewan and I'm in New York or Toronto and I wish I could be there and, and I'm afraid that sometime when they really, really need me, I won't be there and that sort of sits in the back of your mind. I think any of us with aging parents think about that a lot. Well, I've got to say that the, the people that I admire most are truly my parents. These people taught me everything that I needed to know in life. What they taught my sister and I was that character trumps genius. You can be smart and that's really good and it certainly helps in many situations, but if you're not a decent person, if you're not fair, if you're not reasonable, if you're not kind, then it doesn't matter. And that lesson is with me every single day of my life. And every time I listen to it and remember it and act on it, it works. So I have to admire them for teaching us that. I'm a control freak and I think I dislike that part of myself. I can't help it, I'm very conscious of it. And I wish that I didn't always have to say um, what I think in order to organize the situation um, according to my view of the world. What I dislike in somebody else is greed because I think it really affects their entire demeanor. And I don't just mean about money, I mean greed about being the center of attention or the center of the universe or wanting whatever is happening to be about them or wanting people to answer to their needs. I find it offensive, I find it off-putting. It's not self-centeredness, it's not any of that, it really is greed. Well, it's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. I like to buy gifts for people. I think I end up sometimes in a situation of embarrassing people because I will arrive when a gift, with a gift when there's no reason to and it sometimes makes them uncomfortable. I'm excessive about my work as well. I think that would, uh, I th I'm definitely a workaholic, so obsessive, excessive, it falls in that category. I consider niceness to be the most overrated virtue, and I guess I've come to see that particularly by being a Canadian diplomat in America, where what Canada tends to sell itself as is nice. It's not good enough. It's almost self-denigrating. We've so convinced ourselves that we're nice that it means that anything we do must fall into that category. And I think Canadians have to be a little careful of how we treat the outside world. We're quite an insular country in many ways. The main challenge I have in any given day is to do what I've agreed to do. I feel very strongly about living up to my commitments. I don't know, I have some kind of ethic that goes way back. But I always bite off more than I can chew. So it's a constant juggling act and I know this about myself and yet I continue to do it. And then so it always comes out at the bottom end of the day. Fortunately I'm an insomniac so when I've jammed so much in that there's only three or four hours left I can still function but that's the issue. <laughs> When the Prime Minister phoned and said, did I want to go to New York to be Canada's Consul General? I mean, I said yes in a nanosecond. So it's a combination always of being in the right place at the right time, having worked hard to get to that right place, but you've got to stay open to it. I remember a conversation with the late Al Purdy, a poet. What was his mantra in life? And he said, to stay stupid. And I said, but Mr. Purdy, you're not a stupid man. He said, no, no, it's just about keeping your mind open. I think we're constantly in those forks in the road. You have to go primarily with your gut. In the middle of the night when no one else is in the room and nobody else is offering you advice, what do you really feel 
is the right thing for you to do? Where can you make a difference? And then you go with that one. What gives me a sense of satisfaction is accomplishment. When you do something that makes an impact, that makes a difference, and it can be tiny. It can be that you have showed up on somebody's doorstep when they really needed you, even if you could only be there for five minutes, or if you've finished writing the book, or if you've, you know, it can be kind of on in any level, but you know, you want your actions to touch someone and to do that in a positive way. So. That sense of accomplishment, of, of mission accomplished in that sense is, I think that's it. Well, I've received, I have received an awful lot of awards in my life, but I'll tell you the one that meant the most to me was that they renamed a street in Wadena, Saskatchewan, my hometown, Pamela Wallen Drive. I just don't think it gets any better than that because it's your home and it's those people who know all of your strengths and weaknesses, but mostly your flaws. It's not a jury of peers, it's a jury of your family and friends, and that kind of respect and recognition, it topped the heat. You can't ask for anything more. <laughs> what isn't my favorite food? That's my problem. I love food. If I was on the desert island and only could have one thing with me forever and ever and ever, grilled cheese sandwiches. That's my favorite food. My favorite sound really is that purring when my little cat sits on and feels the heartbeat or on my arm. They, they love pulse points. And then this dull, quiet purring just starts. It's really the only thing that can kind of slow me down. That when I hear that and she is so content, then I can't disturb her. And so I actually find moments of peace because she has moments of peace. Home makes me feel safe and secure, and I have a couple of them, you know. There's home, home, where your family is. There's home where you live. There's home with friends, where you feel comfortable in their homes. I think that gives me the strongest sense of safety and security. My motto in life, taught to me by my parents, character trumps genius. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It matters who you are and how you react to others. It's about character. I think that's the most important lesson in life. I try to live by it, and I certainly try and share it.